Hello community! We have two new LLMs and they are called Rick and Rag. Now, as you can see on Hugging Face, just 32 minutes ago we have uploaded by Google the Data Gamma Rag 27B instruction tuned and the Data Gamma Rig 27B instruction tuned on synthetically generated data. And of course, they used here Gamma 2 models here as the primary LLMs. Now, what can they do? Now, there is another part that is even more interesting because Google developed here something like the Global Truth Database. And it is called Data Commons. And this is a vast open source repository of public statistics from organizations like the United Nations, the CDC, all the global census bureaus, maybe the World Health Organization, and you can imagine what. This is an initiative created by Google that aims to make publicly available data more accessible and more useful. And Google organized this in a unified knowledge graph and it is open source. You can access it. However, we have 193 countries, 110,000 cities and about 240 billion data points. So you can imagine this is a real nice global database by Google. And these are the data that are the correct data. This is the global truth. But I think data commons have here specifically two innovations. First, they spend years assessing your numerous publicly available data sets, dragging down the assumption behind the data and normalizing them using here schema.org, an open vocabulary to encode structured data. And this creates here our common knowledge graph incorporating all of the data. And second, they use here LLMs to create a natural language interface that allows us to ask questions in our common language. And we have access to a set of charts and graph to explore this vast database. But to be clear, this global truth database is here to reduce hallucination by all the LLMs. So this particular LLM here is just here if you want the translation LLM. It does not modify or interact with the underlying data, nor does it generate any outputs. So the fear of hallucination is really up to a total minimum. And here we have the publication, this is September 12th, this is today for me and my time zone, from Google, knowing when to ask, bridge, large language model, and data. Beautiful, really informative publication by Google. And what they show you is, we have two ideas. We have the idea of a RIG model, a retrieval interleaved generation model, and of a RAG model. Now, the RIG model, maybe you have not heard of, a tool-inspired approach in which the LLM is fine-tuned by Google, Dan, Jack, to produce natural language data common queries alongside the statistical data. And you see here, you have your RIG system, this is fine-tuned by Google, and then you have a question about the renewable use in the world. And then, as you can see, this system now generates question and ask you the database, the data common database, exactly multiple questions. And these questions are then brought back and hopefully have the correct answer from the global truth database, the data commons. Beautiful. Multimodal pipeline converts natural language query into structured data query that is then used to retrieve the answer from the data common database. This is exactly what's happened here. This is why they call retrieval interleaved generation. But of course, you are waiting for the retrieval augmented generation, our classical rag. So I don't think you have to explain here anything. So we first extract the variables mentioned in the query using here this new fine-tuned rag model here from Data Commons 2. Retrieve the relevant values now from our Data Common database augment the original user query with this additional context. And imagine we ask here about energy consumption, renewable energy consumption. This can be everything from water, solar, whatever you have. So you have to have access to a huge array of data sets, of tables, of tabular data. Therefore, they go now and they use the LLM with 
But what a coincidence, we have a 1 million context length, the token length, for example, with Gemini 1.5 Pro. So they can bring back into the rack here an extreme long sequence of tabular data and all the other data that were available here in data commons here, because renewable energy, this is a whole set of complex data information. And then they bring it back, then they have all the statistics, and then Gemini Pro does create here the response that generates the answer from RAG. So you see, real nice. So we have two new fine-tuned models by Google, one for RIG, one for RAG. And if you want to see them now in the total view, you know, normally we have a question. Has the use of renewables increased in the world? This is a very general question. So if you use here any LLM, you get a baseline response, whatever was in the training data set. But we have no idea what training data set this was. Maybe this was from a newspaper and they got it wrong. So you get here a baseline response. Yeah, 12% and up 6% and maybe this is it. But now with Rick, they say, hey, Rick has access now to the global truth database. And please, the truth has nothing to do here with this uh, communication platform from an ex-president in the United States. No connection at all. This is just here, my wording, the global truth here. So this DC model now has all the information here as officially by the United Nations. And you know the whole thing. And then comes back from the question says, yeah, this are our source of grounding here. This in facts that are officially, these are accepted by the United Nations and, and, and. So these are the official data for all the different 193 countries in our beautiful world. And then for REC, you have even now your query and you got all the documents back. And then you have Gemini Pro to make sense out of this. So you see, a very nice idea. I think it's not only that we have now two beautiful fine-tuned model, but also here that this integration that Google decided it is time to build a global repository of officially, statistically important data on all the city, on all the countries, on all the, I would say, people in this world. And now this is the benchmark against what Google says, okay, and this is now the truth. Yeah, the nice thing, of course, retrieving tables and here with a database SQL, you know everything. This is really nice. But let's come to the interesting point because Google gives us here open source to Colab Notebooks. And this whole thing is open source and we can immediately use it and play with it, experiences, try to understand the complexity. So let's have a first look at the Colab Notebooks. Let us start with the retrieval interleaved model. And here you have all the links available in this notebook. Beautiful. Of course, we go here with a fine-tuned Gamma 227B model. The setup is easy. You need the Hugging Face token, the Data Commons API key. You just install it and you load the model. And this is easy. You have your key here, your token here. We go with bits and bytes in a 4-bit configuration. Beautiful. And then we have our tokenizer and everything you know. It is uploaded on Hugging Face. This is it. And then you pick here a query for Rick. What does Pakistan has made progress against? Health goals. And this is all the code that you need. Rick flow. This is it. And now you can see the questions. What is the life expectancy in Pakistan? What was the mortality? And now you have here the answer from the DC database. Everything about what is available. You have here a conclusion already. And they say, for an up-to-date information, please contact the WHO. Now, our second notebook, of course, is here Rack Retrieval Augmented Generation. We have an A100 GPU with higher RAM runtime in Colab. You have the Hugging Face token, the API key from Data Commons, the Gemini Pro key for our extreme long context length. We load the model as you know it. We have the API client. We have here the key for Gemini, Hugging Face token. We go with bits and bytes in 4-bit, Bflow 16. Model is available on Hugging Face, couldn't be easier. Auto tokenizer from pre trained. This is the RAG model with the RAG flow. And then we pick a query. Do the yes state have high coal fired power plants? Do they also have high rates of COPD? 
and very sad question but you know now you have the data from the official sources so we run the rack we print here the output as you see it is just some lines of code and you see already here the question that are coming up what is the rate of COPD in the US? How many coal fire plants do we have? In what states? What is the rate of growth? And here you have now the question, do US states with high coal fired power plant also have high rates of COPD? And then you have here for the US, here the official data. You have Utah, India, Arkansas, Indiana, whatever there is, you have all the official tables. And you see, do you have access to all the data? And Gemini generates now the answer. So with these two models, you can be sure you have grounded fact the official version of data comments by Google.